Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to Our Town, another special opportunity here at the Abilene Public Library. We have Bill Castlebaum, who is the state treasurer for the Paul Davis campaign for governor here in the fine state of Kansas, and who I read is a country lawyer and a rancher. That's correct. So I have a question for you. Do you have a sense of humor? I, I, I think so. <laughs> well, the rancher almost demands it. That's right, it? that's right. Okay, so I gotta tell you this story that happened to me this morning. I have a 14-year-old boy. We're waiting for the bus that comes five to seven, rural Talmadge buses him into USD 435. And he goes, ha, 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 ha. And he's looking at his iPad. And I go, what's it? He says, Dad, you're gonna love this. So he brings it over. And on the screen is Ronald Reagan. And he presses play. And Reagan telling a joke that you probably remember, I remember too. He was a great joke teller. He told mm -hmm. a lot of jokes. So, and as my son has no idea what I was doing today, but I did. So it's a funny joke. You want to hear it? Sure. Okay. So here's Mr. Reagan saying, Republican uh, in the South where there weren't many Republicans was running for office. So he's out in the country visiting people, shaking hands, giving stump speeches. So he goes up to the farmhouse, knocks on the door, and the farmer answers the door, says hi, and he says, hi, I'm candidate so-and-so, I'm the Republican candidate for office. And the farmer goes, holy mackerel, wait just a minute, let me go get Ma. She's never seen a Republican before. Mm -hmm. So they go in and, and gets his wife, and, and, the, and the candidate's looking around for something that could resemble a stump, and there was a pile of something that uh, Bess Truman worked on getting Harry Truman to call fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And so he thought, well, the pile's a pile, so he got up on it. Ma and Pa come out the door and he gives his little candidate speech and gets all done and Ma says, my, I've never heard a Republican speech before. And the Republican says, well, this is the first time a Republican's ever given a speech on a Democratic platform. <laughs> so I thought about you, bud, and I thought, that's funny. So uh, I didn't tell it as good as Mr. Reagan, I'm sure. But you are uh, a voice speaking for Paul Davis from the Republican side of the street. That's correct. I'm a Republican. I'm a precinct committee person, uh, former Republican office holder in uh, 68th House seat here. Mm -hmm. Dickinson County and Morris County, uh, but I've come out for Paul Davis and he asked me to serve as his treasurer and I agreed to do that. Um, I'll, I'll tell you my story. Okay, of, of, uh, love it. Bob Dole was doing his tour earlier this summer and, and I, he came to Morris County and I went to say hello to him. I've met him in the past and just to thank him. And, uh, Hello, Senator Dole, I'm Bill Kasbaum. Just want to thank you for coming by. And he, he's sitting down in his chair and he kind of cocks his head and looks at me and goes, <laughs> well, I hear you switched parties. I said, no, no, Senator, I'm still a Republican. Mm -hmm. I just kind of think uh, when somebody's going in the wrong direction, which I think Governor Brownback is, that they need to step up and do something about it. And, and Senator Dole says, well, Maybe you're a little bit like me. I said, well, actually, I'm probably a lot like my grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. um, when policies uh, are probably not in the best interest of the state, you need to step up and do something about it. So, what a, uh, I, I want to take the opportunity to say if we never agreed on anything, mm -hmm. we would agree right there. Uh, the, the, the debate should always be about the policy, not the person, and certainly not the party. Can't imagine a more a bigger waste of time than debating a party. Yeah, well, I would agree. Other than uh, perhaps people in the party could debate what their party is doing. Right. Uh, and, and you know, my argument would be that uh, the party is there to serve the people, not the people to serve the party. Agreed. And and when the party becomes rather uh, doctrinaire and requiring that. Mm -hmm you believe this or you're not part of the party, well, I, I don't know if that's true. I mean, the tenets of republicanism, small government, mm -hmm. is something I believe in and mm -hmm. still do, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm still a Republican. Um, but um, if starting to veer off in directions that's not good for the state as a whole, then 
that's where I'm going to okay. step up. Okay, all right. So we don't get too far in the weeds because yep. you came here to talk about policy. Um, we'll probably uh, go, go to policy. Um, the debate about partyism versus ideas is a huge one. We'd love to have you come back and do that sometime just for fun because it'd be a great conversation. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about policy, um, your candidate. And so what are the two or three big ideas that your candidate is supporting that you would want to talk about today? Right. Well, the policy that got me involved with supporting Paul is, is the governor's tax policy, Governor Brambach's tax policy, and uh, getting rid of the progressive income tax is creating a revenue problem in the state. And uh, we haven't reduced spending, but we have reduced our revenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, where Governor Brownback has said, we're gonna not only keep where we are, which is reducing income taxes, gonna even do it faster than what mm -hmm. the law currently states. And uh, Paul Davis has said, no, let's freeze any future reductions in the income tax and see where we are and it, what we might have to adjust, you know, it, it, revenue and expenses go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And um, right now our revenue doesn't match our expenses, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Uh, that balancing act is a delicate one, no matter the size of the government or the place that it happens. Right over there is the City Commission correct, Hall correct. for Abilene. And, um, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody walk into a city commission meeting or a county commission meeting, both of which I, I frequented over the years a lot in various towns, and say, I demand less services. <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, matter of fact, I, my, one of my jobs is county councilor for Morris County, and, and I distinctly remember one time when there was a, a, a large gathering of people upset about uh, property taxes and the valuations that had been set by the county. And there was a heated meeting about it, and I can remember one gentleman coming up to the microphone and, and by golly, these property taxes are too high, and kind of banging on the microphone, and uh, did his, you know, he came and said what he had to say, and uh, before he turned around, though, and he said, oh, and by the way, I need more gravel on <laughs> my right. road in front of my house. My <laughs> road needs fixed. Yeah. And, uh, and Somebody that's just, stole my cow. That's just it. And so uh, we've, we've talked a lot about taxes in the campaign uh, from both sides. Uh, it, 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 the fact is we, we have not brought in enough money to pay for what we've budgeted to pay for as, as a state. And so what are we going to do about that? Okay. Um, is it fair? Um, I'll just ask you. Brownback presented, Governor Brownback presented his tax policy as a plan. Mm -hmm. I think it's been also called an experiment. As somebody who's not interested in politics and you look at it, any change is an experiment. I mean, that's the way the mm -hmm. world works. So uh, is it fair to say that that was an experiment in tax policy? Um, well, the governor himself used that word experiment. Okay. I don't say it's negative. I'm just asking yeah. you because it's going to my follow-up question. Yeah. Going to be on that. Um, well, I would, where I come from, which is perhaps unique in a lot of people in the state, is my grandfather was Alf Landon, mm -hmm. who, when he was running for governor in 1932, the, um, there was an amendment to the Constitution on the ballot in 32 to begin a progressive income tax. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have to campaign for that. It was a separate ballot issue. But he went around actually mm -hmm. advocating for this amendment. It passed. He was elected. And so in 1933, when he was governor, he got through the legislature the first progressive income tax in Kansas. And so from 1933 up into 2012, that's the system we've had. And so if you... Is this an experiment? No, because you can look back at Kansas in the 1920s and see where we were financially. How did we pay for things in 1920? Well, it was high property tax, high sales tax, and state services were basically very limited to a few major roads. Uh, it was, it was, a, uh, it was, 
it is not recognizable to the modern society that we have now. And, and so that's where I would point it. Okay. There, there was high property taxes, high sales taxes, and, and far fewer services. So is this an experiment? Well, that's what's going to happen, 1920s Kansas, in my opinion, if, if, okay. if we keep down this path. All right. Um, for better or for worse, you're sitting with a guy who was born and raised in a place in Colorado that makes Burdick look like a metropolis. <laughs> and uh, I went from there to upstate New York, uh, mm -hmm. where I rode horses and went to college. Worked on a large farm, and a large farm up there is 2,500 acres. Uh, my uncle owned that operation. Um, I went back to Colorado, ran a family business in the energy business, uh, went, got bored to death, went back to New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire as a professional horse trainer. Mer new Hampshire is one of the states that has two sets of taxes. It's property tax and sales tax. There is no income tax. Mm -hmm. So I've lived in several experiments, I guess. My observation is this. Uh, it doesn't matter how the taxes are taken, about the same amount close to the same amount ends up leaving and you get different qualities of service but that's the way it works at the mm -hmm. end of the day it takes a certain amount of money to fund government services which everybody wants mm -hmm. so the question to me then becomes so maybe what generates growth better because i'm a business guy uh, eagle is a business company right um a farmer rancher you know entrepreneur so you look at that and you say so what's going to grow our opportunity for us what do you think about that well i don't know that taxes necessarily uh, when it comes to growth mm -hmm. people look at taxes first as to deciding what to do uh, if you're looking at moving into kansas i would say people probably look more at What's the educational opportunities in that state? I want to raise a family. I want my kids to have a good school. They'll probably look at that first. And, and, and indeed, the Department of Commerce does many studies on what companies are looking for when they move to a location. And, and education's the number one thing that's on all of their lists. Uh, so I don't know that taxes, as far as promoting growth, it, it, it does and people structure themselves in certain ways to take advantage of taxes, but I don't think that's the overall reason to move into a location. We had the superintendent of schools here, uh, Dr. Guy, uh, who had a bond issue, a $24 million bond issue. We worked pretty hard to help them present their education message, mm -hmm. um, and we've done similar things for other people. In fact, we'll have the USD 379 superintendent on, on this program this afternoon talking about the same thing. So, giving you some background. The tax policy that funds schools is how schools are largely funded, state and local, agreed? Right. Okay. Everybody, that, I've never met anybody that didn't agree with good schools are important to growth in your community, stability in your community, or in fact, whether it dies or not. Right. I've never seen anybody disagree with that. However, it seems to be disconnected from the fact that tax policy is used to fund schools. So, okay, if we're depending on schools to drive growth, as, and we are, there isn't a governing body in Dickinson County that would say that's not true. Right. So, tax policy is used to do that. The, the thing I think um, of because I'm a, a father of a daughter who came back to Kansas from New Hampshire with her husband and my only grandchild, so I'm a happy guy. Um, unfortunately for me, uh, they're still a little bit too far away. They're in Wichita. Uh -huh. But here's what Dad sent them when they told me they're thinking about it. I said, you should check into Peabody. Why was the question. Well, great little town, not too far from Wichita, and also, Kansas just released a policy for professional people who want to move back to rural America, Kansas, that makes it easy for you to do so. You should look at that. It's going to be a big deal for people just like you love, Dad. Yeah. The RAWS program is where rural opportunity zones right. and certain counties were designated as RAWS zones. Morris County, my county, is, is one. Right. Um, and. We participate as a county. Uh, it, 
what we've noticed at, at our county, any any rate, the, the the people who came and qualified for the Raws came anyway. I mean, it wasn't the Raws that prompted them to come there. It was um, yeah. other factors. It, it it's helping them. It's a benefit to them. Sure. Uh, okay. But it they were coming anyway. Yeah. Which. which you I know. would agree with that. I would agree with that. In fact, my daughter chose, yeah, Dad, that's a great program, and it would help us a lot, but it probably wouldn't make up for the drive back and forth to Wichita. So, right. Right. But they came anyway, and they came anyway because of Wichita State. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think there's a wide agreement. We fund this program because of those areas that people need to know. Okay, so we've yeah. got four minutes left. We, we talk slow, evidently. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, schools and tax policy are the big issues that I've seen, and they're really one and the same. Well, yes and no. Okay. Schools are funded through tax policy. Your tax policy has to do two things. One is be fair, and two, raise revenue to fund what you've budgeted to fund. And I think Governor Brownback's policy has been proven it doesn't do either. It's not fair that an entity structured as an LLC uh, would not pay, those individuals who receive their income through the LLC would not pay an income tax while hourly workers who you know get a W-2 form are gonna pay state income tax. That's inherently unfair. Because they're, they're all receiving the same state services. Mm -hmm. One's paying an income tax to fund those state services. The other's not. That's not fair. And two, okay. if it's not raising the funds necessary that you've budgeted, mm -hmm. then it's, it's an inadequate policy to yeah. do what you need to do. I'll grant you your logic, and uh, even in an area, in m much of what we agree on. Um, back when I said experiment, I think it's an experiment to do away with taxation on LLCs and sub S corps and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, I don't mind trying a few experiments for growth. However, my, my fear is this, if it's not allowed to last long enough, it's by definition going to fail. You don't do anything big change in a company and a family in a state and, and it works in a little while. Well, it's not working so far. And again, I think you can look back to how the state funded in, in, in the 20s mm -hmm. and to get an idea of, is this gonna work now? And the answer is gonna be no. Um, you, you talked about, we're still gonna be paying for these services. Mm -hmm. You're right, the difference is we'll be using, relying more on property tax or sales tax. Property tax is the worst kind of tax because people will have to pay that tax no matter what their income is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pay your tax, your property will be sold at a delinquent tax sale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's difficult. If you don't have the money, uh, you're, you've got terrible problems. Whereas and, income's gonna be based on your income. Yeah. So. And the, the results of that long time experiment in New Hampshire are these. You see uh, landowners who have um, either a lot of money or who are trying to sell their house. And then the other thing, you have a lot of rental property. And yeah. the rental people are paying yeah, the property the tax. tax through high rents. So, but my biggest issue with it, it, it stifles the innovation of somebody who wants to buy a little piece mm -hmm. of land. Well, we, and, the, and the other problem is you get then real winners and losers just based on the, where you live. If you live in a region that has high valuation, you're gonna be a winner. Your school's gonna be well-funded. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, tax revenue to fund whatever you need to fund. If you live in a low valuation area, you're not gonna have revenues to pay for a decent school. You're gonna have just lower revenue to do anything. Law enforcement, highways. Um, if you're out at Hugoton with a lot of natural resources, you're gonna have, be a winner. If you're in a Morris County that has low valuation, you're gonna be a loser. I mean, it's... I would grant you that, and as we wrap up, I, I want to put, uh, this isn't an unbiased show, by the way, so, and people are used to that. I'm a person, and I don't pretend to be unbiased. Um, you know, I moved here for a reason. Cars are still available. Hugoton's that way, 
somebody wants to pick up and move, it's a free country. I grant what you say, and you did a great job of informing us. There's one more thing you need to do as we wrap up. You need to tell people how they can get in touch with you so you can continue this conversation with them. Website or phone number as you prefer. Yeah, I, I think through uh, Paul Davis campaign, which is on, he, he's got a web page and a Facebook page and go through that entity okay. and All right. I'd be happy to carry on. Okay, well, you've been a very uh, polite and fun uh, spokesman for Mr. Davis this morning and I greatly appreciate the chance to meet you and interview okay. you on tape. Glad to be here. Will you come back and talk about some big ideas one of these days Well, I'd be happy to. All right. If I have any big ideas, I'll, I'll do it. Well, you don't have to bring the idea. We'll put them up there. You just have no. to <laughs> tell me what you think about them. Be happy to. All right. Folks, we appreciate your time on Our Town today, and for Bill Kassebaum, a representative of Paul Davis, and Eagle Communications, Dennis Weiss, have a great day.